Hello and welcome to Candidates on the Clock, sponsored by the Newton County Chamber of Commerce. I'm Lanier Sims, your host. Today we're joined by Casey Morgan that's running for Georgia Senate, District 17. Yes. Uh, Mr. Morgan, could you take a couple minutes to tell the citizens a little bit more about you? My name is uh, Casey Morgan, uh, born and raised in Morgan County, Madison, Georgia. Um, I'm a local pastor uh, down in Union Point, Georgia. Been pastoring since uh, 2007. Um, went away for a little while to join the military. Uh, retired from the military in 2015. Uh, served, went to over in Iraq. Um, was headed back for another tour, but got injured. But um, it didn't stop me from wanting to serve. Um, that's a passion I have is serving uh, other peoples. Uh, you can't be a help to anybody until you can learn how to serve. Um, I'm married. I have one daughter um, who lives in Covington, Georgia. Um, I had another daughter who passed away January 26. And I uh, miss her very much. And uh, I told her when I win this campaign, it's going to be for her. And um, I just thank God, amen, that. Uh, I'm able to do something in remembrance of her. Um, my wife's name is Tabitha Morgan. Uh, she's a teacher at the Greensboro Elementary School. Uh, like I said, I served 20 years in the military. The church I passed is named uh, Bethel Barrow Baptist Church down in Union Point, Georgia. Um, I have one brother. Uh, my mom and dad are still living. Um, my passion is for helping people. I see too much going on in the world today for, to just stand around. I mean, I served 20 years in the military. Just because I got out of it don't mean I supposed to stop trying to help and trying to serve. Some of the same people we were trying to liberate, we need to do the same thing here in the United States. We need to try to liberate some here too. Um, there's so much, so many things we can do better than what we're doing right now. Um, economically, um, with our judicial system, uh, with our roads, I mean, it's just so much. Um, it'll take me a lifetime probably to tell you about them, but you see them every day just like I see them. Because we ride on them every day, we shop in them every day, um, we pay taxes every day. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so the citizens um, of Noon County uh, submitted some questions, and we're going to get into those questions right now. Uh, so first question is, um, What's your view or are you willing to support legislation to offer nonpartisan local elections? That's your uh, Board of Commissioners, Board of Education, uh, and even uh, municipalities that are um, uh, currently not nonpartisan. When you said nonpartisan, I mean, what are you, what exactly is that? So instead of, uh, let's say the Board of Commissioners race, instead of it being uh, a Democrat and Republican, it just be nonpartisan. So there's, um, okay. that's the question. Um, I would say yes, um, because it shouldn't matter whether you're Democrat, Republican, or Independent. If you're for the people, I could have some Republican views, some Democratic views, some Independent views, but yet still I'm the same person. So I would be nonpartisan. And maybe that's what the people need instead of trying to put us in a box and call us a Democrat and I got to support this Democratic view or call me an independent and I got to support this independent view or the same way with a Republican, I got to support this way. And then that's what they're going to be looking for. Republicans going to be looking for certain things. Democrats are going to be looking for certain things. But the truth be told, we need all three, the Republicans, the independents, and the Democrats if you want to make it work because neither party has all the answers. You can believe that neither party has all the answers. But together, if you put them together, we can come up with the right answer. Um, our schools and, and just different things like that. Um, there's different things in my house that works better for me in the school system versus what might work in a Republican house for the school system. But why we can't come together and come up with a solution instead of arguing about this back and forth and, and just sit down at a table iron it out and sometimes believe it or not ask our kids what do they want i mean that's just one idea i'm talking about about the education department but in other things we can do the same thing with it about building roads um about taxes and, and different things um it, it's just so many ways we could do better than what we're doing and i think what got us stuck is being republican democrat independent or you know whatever the case might be that's what's got us stuck and marred down in clay right now okay thank you um, continuing with, with that a little bit, 
What's your view or would you support legislation to remove politics from the redistricting process by using automation or appointed boards to remove partisan interests from the process? Yes, um, I, I would say yes because um, when you take politics out of, out of stuff um, and just look at the process is itself, what's best for the people. Instead of worrying about your politics or this politics or whatever the case might be, when you take out things that, that shouldn't be there in the first place, you, you'll get a better solution, a better answer. Um, how can I say it? Um, just because I live on one side of town doesn't mean I don't need what the other side has to offer. So if I let politics cause me to redistrict, you know, or do this and do that, then I'm cutting somebody short somewhere. But if I keep working hard enough and, and keep looking at things the way they need to be looked at, instead of looking at them one-sided because of politics, um, we're gonna always have a problem. You know, I said I was a pastor. Um, if I let politics take over my church, then I'm only gonna preach what a certain group of people wanna hear. I'm not going to preach for thus says the Lord, which is the whole entire Bible. I can't skip here and skip there and sugarcoat this and sugarcoat. I got to preach it this way God gave it to me. And I just use that as an analogy. But um, yeah, take politics out of stuff. Thank you. What's, what's your view on the expansion of Medicare and Medicaid in Georgia? That's a, that, that's, that's a good one now for me. Um, like I said, I'm retired military, and when I got back from um, overseas, I was having trouble myself because I was on the reserve side of the house, getting the operation I truly needed. I had to write my congressman just to get the operation, and I'm on active duty, I'm an active duty soldier. And just to get this operation, I had to write a congressman just to get it. Now, we live right next door to, to Canada. And that healthcare system is just about free. Um, we're supposed to be the richest country in the world, or one close to it. Why is it so hard for us to get our system in line where people don't have to go through all these changes about how much this drug costs or that drug costs? If, if insulin was $700 last month, and then you can cut it down to 135 this month, that means you could have cut it the whole time. You could have been did this. But why? Because of politics. That's why it wasn't cut. So it needs to be made where people can get the medical care they need at an affordable price, or it needs to be free to all. Thank you. Will you support an increase in our state minimum wage? Yes. Yes, I, I would support an increase. Um, the increase they got now, if you notice, when you ride by restaurants in different places, um, I think the local, the increase they got is like $15 an hour, what they uh, projecting it to be or whatever. Um, but when you ride by the stores, it says up to $12, up to $15, up to $14. It don't say starting at. Don't say starting at this. So you might be starting at $9. You might be starting at $10. But if we got a base of $15 an hour, then we know what we're gonna be making. And to be honest with you, that's still to me is not enough for a family, a husband, a wife, and two kids not to live on. That's, that's the, the, the modern family pretty much right now, if you wanna look at it that way. It's not enough to support them. Things are so high right now. I mean, grocery, gas, and everything else, and I pray to God it don't stay like this. But at $15 an hour, um, that, I, I didn't do the math on anything, but is that thirty thousand dollars a year? I, I'm not sure, but that's probably close. It, it's probably close to it, but that's still you, you're cutting it close in. And um, I just I just think we can do better. Um, the companies that are coming up, um, if we take greed out of a lot of equations, um, we'll do better. And I'm gonna say it because this is my campaign. If we take greed out of the politician's hand and quit being so greedy. If we take greed out of the corporation's hands and quit being so greedy. 
and start looking at the people and their needs and what they truly need. What I, what I mean by that is, um, like I said about insulin a while ago, are we gonna let somebody die because we can't get insulin? Because they're not making enough and we wanna pay them up to $15 an hour, but it really is nine. The sign just says up to 15, but it's really nine. Are we gonna let somebody die because of that? Next, we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about economic development. As Rivian is slated to make Social Circle its new headquarters, what do you think needs to be done to prepare your constituents for the Rivian arrival? Well, um, what needs to be done for Rivian um, is something that should have been did before it even came in. The citizens should have been made more aware of what was going on because I've seen the news. I live in Morgan County, right there in Social Circle area right now. I see all the signs even far as my house down in Buckhead, Georgia. And um, the people are upset. And they kind of got every right to be because they don't know what to expect. You know, you got companies coming in and they sign this piece of paper saying they're going to do this for the economy or, or they're going to do this for the um, uh, uh, for nature or whatever. Um, but next thing you know, you know, you got chemicals leaking all over the place. You got this going on, that going on. They need to be made to be responsible. You know, be fine. If you don't hold up to your end of the bargain, you need to be fine out of this world. Because you promised the people if they let this company come in, that you would take care of them. And the other thing I have is, um, it, there's no doubt about it, if we need this company or not. We definitely need it to create jobs. But the problem is, nobody wants it in their backyard. If it was in Buckhead, Social Circle wouldn't have a problem. If it was in uh, uh, Buckhead, uh, uh, in, in Ball Suite, Buckhead wouldn't have a problem, and, and, and so on. Nobody wants it in that backyard because nobody knows what they expect. So there need to be some ground rules laid down for these companies when they come in here, and they need to be made to stick to them. And that goes back to what I just said. Take greed out of the equation. And I, I, you know, I'm new at this politics and everything, and, and, and all I can do is speak from my heart and the things I've been through through the military and how to treat people. But um, don't lie to people. If you tell them something's gonna happen, this is what it's gonna be, that's what it needs to be. Our politicians we need to be made to stick to them. County commission, city councilman, or the mayor, whoever it might be in this chain of command, need to be made to stick to whatever proposal was put on the table. Okay, thank you. Um, Historically, none of our local delegation, our state reps, state senators, live in Newton County. What can you do to make more attempts for appearances, planning for upcoming legislative sessions, and general presence here in Newton County? Um, here we go again. I'm glad you asked. I've, I've thought about this before I decided to run about being a people's person, uh, make myself accessible to the people. And, you know, before the redistricting happened, we used to be the 25th district, and it swapped to the 17, which it cut down on the number of counties. And my plan was to have a uh, quarterly session. Um, and we, we, the way it's cut down now, it makes it easier for me. You know, it was trying to divide nine counties into uh, four quarters. Now, pretty much all I gotta do is divide four counties into four quarters. and. Um, you know, Social Circle is, I mean, uh, Newton County is big enough to go with, uh, to, to be by itself, to be a uh, meeting by itself. Henry County would probably require two meetings because it's so big. But then you got Social Circle in Morgan County. You could put those two together and then you could have your quarterly meeting right there. But at the same time, you can cross lines and come to any meeting you want to if you want to hear from your representative. You, if you want to talk to them, you can come to any meeting. And then I want to make myself where the people can get in touch with me. You know, if you email me, I'm going to get back with you. If it, it, it may not be the answer you want, but I'm going to get you an answer. Um, I just don't believe in leaving somebody hanging and, um, or telling them I don't know. Because if you ask a question, there has to be an answer. There's got to be an answer somewhere other than I don't know. And um, if we be more honest and, and be honest with people, we get a whole lot farther. And people will trust us more. Um, one of my biggest problems is, you know, um, when the politicians used to come to the church when I was a child, and they would come in and speak for, you know, a few minutes. But I hadn't seen them all year long. But they come in and speak for a few minutes, and then they go on to the next place. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be one of those politicians. They come to the church and speak for a few minutes. 
I want to be somebody you see in the neighborhood on a regular basis. Okay, thank you. Um, our last question uh, is going to be, what are the challenges facing your district that must be addressed in the next four years? The challenges facing my district that I would love to see addressed in the next four years, and I just finished talking about them a few minutes ago, um, is home ownership. Um, I think we're building too many apartments. Um, apartments are fine, don't get me wrong, but how can we build generational wealth with no home? Um, and I'm going to say it, especially for the black family. That's basically how we start off building wealth. And let's go a little farther for poor white families and black families. That's how we start building wealth from, from that point on. We want to leave our kids more than just a bill. I'm going to leave them a wheel with something in it. You know, leave them grandma my house that was given to me, pass it down, or, or build another house. I mean, but every time you build an apartment, you're paying somebody else's notes. You're making them richer. If you can build a unit that holds 250, that has 250 units or 300 units in it, and you're charging people $1,100 a unit, but I can go over here and build a house at $900 a month, somewhere along in there, why can't I get financed for this house? But yet and still, I can live in this apartment for a couple of hundred dollars more than my mortgage would be, I can live in this house. And you can let me stay there 10 years and I'm A1 credit with you on that. But when it comes to me moving over in a house, it's a problem. We need to build more housing. That's, that's one of the things facing. Um, another thing is um, placing the money that's allocated for the city and the counties all in one area. I have a problem with that. Um, when money comes from the, the, the state or whatever for the counties, um, it needs to be allocated equally, divided equally. Um, everything shouldn't be on one side of town. What, I was gonna say, where, ahead, I, where, ahead, I, where I live at, in Morgan County, you got the Aqua Center, the library, the baseball diamonds, all the schools, uh, the tennis courts, you name it, it's on this one side of town. And the property value is way up there. But the only school that was on the other side of town, they shut it down. And now on this side of town, you got an empty school over there that is gonna start to have crime going around for a while if you don't do something with it. And um, the property value is just falling. But you're putting all the money on this side of town. There was a thing in the paper um, a couple of months ago about money that was given, like $10 million or whatever it was. Um, and they were saying they were gonna redo the baseball diamond. And I looked at the baseball diamond. It looked like a minor league team could play that now. And you're gonna put money on top of that when this side of town is dying? We had, I think it was nine polling places in Morgan County. You just shut down two of them. And they were the two that was closest to the black neighborhoods and you shut them down. For what reason? Now, I don't know the reason behind it. I'm not into politics as of yet. But I want to be able to give somebody an answer when they ask me that same question. Why was those two polling places shut down? We hadn't had a polling place in um, the black neighborhood probably in the last five years since the last one closed and never opened another one back up. And I went to the um, Board of Elections meeting and asked the same questions. Nobody could give me an answer. How is it you the Board of Electors, but you can't give me an answer to a simple question like that? You know, I, when somebody asks me, I want to tell them, this is why we didn't open it back up, or this is what we plan to do to get a polling place over here, to make you feel comfortable when you go vote, when you go poll. You know, even in Florida, where Ron DeSantis is down there, you know, you got polling cops. I wouldn't feel comfortable going somewhere to vote, and I got a polling cop looking over my shoulder. You know, and, and some things just need to change. Okay. Well, uh, I want to thank you, Mr. Morgan, for coming out today. Uh, thank you for answering the top questions that were submitted by our citizens. At this time, could you close us out with any further information that you'd like the voters to know about you or your campaign? Okay. <clears throat> just give me just a second. Um, I'll close this out. Um, there's a few things I wanted to add. Um, I'm very passionate about what I do. I mean, I really am. I'm very passionate about my ministry. I'm very passionate about helping people. Um, I turn my pockets inside out 
for somebody or anybody. And sometimes I can know they're lying to me, but that's on you. But that's, that's the way I operate. Because I'm thinking in my mind, you'll get it after a while. You'll start to understand after a while what you're doing is not good. And sometimes people pick up on it. And so um, who am I to say who's going to turn around and who's not? But I, I say that to, to, to get at this angle right here. Our judicial system, that is one of the top priorities in the state that we need to work on. Um, it's awful. I mean, you know, we want to get, and I'm going to just be honest, and people might get mad or get upset, however they look at it, but it's the truth. We want to get upset when we see the news and, and we have a young black man is killed by a white police officer. We get upset. This happens daily, so we should be upset daily. It shouldn't be just when we see the news. And it keep on happening because we see it today, it's out of the news tomorrow. But it happens every day. You just don't see it televised every day. We need to have police reform. And what I mean by reform is, I spent 20 some years in the military. The guy beside me got the same, on each side of me got the same training I got. And 90% of the time, they training took just like my training took. And we went on to have nice careers in the military. So don't tell me training don't work, because it does. It's what you add to your training. It's what's already in your heart and in your mind. And I honestly believe this right here. When you work on a job and you get injured, you have to go to the hospital and take a drug test. Every time you drop a pallet on your foot, you gotta go take a drug test. You can stop by the police or whatever, you know, they draw blood or whatever the case might be. It should be where police is. And, I, and good police shouldn't have a problem with this. If the taser is used, if somebody's shot, a chokehold is used, anything that causes a suspect to have to be, to, to seek medical attention, that officer should have to submit to a drug test. Because we got so many officers amped up on steroids and all kind of other stuff that's going on. And I'm telling the truth. I got too many friends as police. And, and a lot of them agree with me. Um, and there's nothing bad about our good officers. You know, 90, 95, 97% of your officers are excellent police officers. They come to work just like I do. They go home every day like I do. They be with their kids, they be with their wife, and they want to live their lives. It's that 3% that's bad that gives the whole 97% that bad view in the public. But that 97%, you ever heard the expression, the good got to suffer with the bad? Well, they don't have to suffer with the bad. They really don't. Because this will eliminate some of that. Because can't nobody go in that bathroom and use it but you when it comes time to take that drug test when you're messed up like that. So it eliminates some of this. And um, mental evaluations. Before, um, you hired on as an officer, you need to have a mental evaluation. Because I know guys that went out right with me. That a police is now that shouldn't have no gun in their hand right now. They shouldn't. Because I know what, I was a medic, and I know what we did over there and the things we went through. And they're, they're not capable. I mean, I could put on a show and, and say this and say that, but things flash back in people's minds, and they don't mean it. It's by accident, they really don't mean it. But sometimes, you know, you can catch some of this stuff. Even when um, police go out to the scene, I know every county cannot afford a mental health person to go out with every call. But maybe we can have one on standby to catch some of these calls, mm -hmm. that a mental health person can go out when he can, like a negotiator or something, you know, go out and talk and, and, and cut down on some of this stuff. But like I said, it's, we are, not just black people should be up in arms. Everybody should be up in arms. The George Floyd issue, and and Ahmaud Arbery and all these other issues, everybody should be upset about this. And it shouldn't be a, every time I sit on TV I'm upset, it should be a daily thing until this thing is solved. And it can be solved. It can cut weed out. Well, we appreciate you being here. And could you, could you tell the citizens okay. how they can get in touch with your campaign? Okay. And um, like I said, we'd really appreciate you uh, taking time today with us. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. And you know, sometimes I get to talk and I get just That's no problem. I get drawn up in it. But um, my um, 
Email address is uh, Casey, K A C Y M O R G A N, the number seven at yahoo.com. That's K A C Y M O R G A N, the number seven at yahoo.com. My number is 706 474 1131, and I have a um, GoFundMe page to help me with my campaign. Um, everything I've done to this date, with the exception of maybe 5%, it's been done out of my pocket. That's how much I care. Win, lose, or draw, I just want to get the message out. And um, if you call me or get in touch with me, I'll get back in touch with you. Um, I need some help with my campaign. I do. I need um, some people just willing to uh, knock on some doors to help out. And uh, I'm passionate about what I do. Um, I thank all of y'all so much for giving me this opportunity, this chance to uh, speak to the people of Newton County. Um, I used to work here for 10 years uh, with the Georgia Department of Transportation out of Madison, and um, it's a beautiful county. I worked every road up here, 81, 36, 212, uh, 142, uh, your bypass. I worked every road up here, and um, thank you all so much. Um, to God be the glory, and may God keep you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir.